How much phosphorus does your crop really need? You know, whatever crop you're looking at, there are different nutrient needs. And the big thing is just understanding exactly how much that crop is going to remove from the soil and also how much that crop needs to have a good healthy plant, a good healthy stalk that's going to stand until harvest. But you know what? It starts with having a good soil test and knowing how much you have in your soil to begin with. But yes, you do have to look at what that crop is actually going to remove. So we encourage you to download the free Ag PhD fertilizer removal app for your smartphone or your iPad. We developed this app in conjunction with IPNI, so it's really good data, years of research behind it and everything. Uh, we've basically used a lot of their data and what we found is most people don't really know what the crop does need. So let's just talk about 60 bushel soybeans, for example. A lot of people say, boy, I wish I could get 60 bushel beans. Well, you know what it's going to take for phosphorus is 44 actual pounds to raise the grain and another 14 pounds to raise the over, and that's actual phosphate, not MAP or DAP pounds, that's actual phosphate. So 58 pounds total. Well, when you think about corn, if you're raising 200 bushel corn, 70 pounds of phosphate are going to be removed by the grain. Another 32 pounds are needed for that stover. So again, here's 102 pounds of phosphate that need to be available to be successful raising a 200 bushel corn crop. All right, so let's come back to that soil test. If you get a good soil test, you're probably testing the top six inches, right? Okay, so if you've got, let's say, 15 parts per million of P1 phosphorus, and that's basically available phosphorus. In effect then, for six inches of soil, you've got to multiply that number by two. So 15 times two is 30 pounds. And there are a lot of labs that will tell you, oh, that's a pretty decent level. Well, no, it's not. That's not gonna get you 200 bushel corn. That's not gonna get you 60 bushel soybeans. You're gonna to have to apply a fair amount of phosphorus. But you also have to understand in that soil test how much organic matter you have, because for every 1% of organic matter, you're gonna have roughly four to seven pounds of phosphate coming available through the season through mineralization. So let's say I had 4% organic matter times, we'll figure the low level, uh, I said four to seven pounds of phosphate per percent of organic matter, let's just figure four. Okay, so four times 4%, that's 16 more pounds. So I got 16 pounds available there. I've got 30 pounds already available in my soil. So that's 46 total pounds. Is that enough to raise 200 bushel corn or 60 bushel soybeans? No, that's still not enough. So you've got to apply more phosphorus. Okay, that's a lot of numbers, but let me, let me say why we're doing this. So why a six inch soil test? Because a majority of your root system is gonna be in the top six inches. You've got lots of roots there for about any crop. Uh, yes, there are some that are going to go deeper, but you got quite a few of them right there in the top six inches. And then why do we multiply parts per million on a soil test times two? Because a six inch soil test basically represents about two million pounds of soil. So whatever our parts per one million are, well, we just need to multiply that by two to get pounds per acre. Here's the other really important thing to understand. Your soil pH needs to be right. That's the first thing you've got to look at on the soil test. If your soil pH is outside the range of 6.3 to 7.3, so let's just say, for example, at 7.8, you're not going to have as much phosphorus come available as what you think. What's happening is you're getting tie up in that soil. In high pH soils, you'll get tie up with calcium. So calcium and phosphate will bind together to form calcium phosphate. That's inside in water, your plant can't take that up. On the low end of things, you can get phosphorus binding up with aluminum or iron or something else there. So you want that pH right. If your pH is in the 6.3 to 7.3 range, you're in pretty good shape. If it's outside that range, I'd apply even more phosphorus than you think you might need because of that tie-up factor. Our studies and university studies have shown that you're going to need approximately 50% more phosphorus when you broadcast compared to a banded rate. So in other words, if you were going to put out, let's say 60 pounds of phosphate in a band, you would need 90 pounds of phosphate in a broadcast to be similar in terms of uptake and overall efficiency. So that's a really big deal and that's the reason why we want you to start looking at all these factors. We're talking about this today because let's face it, phosphorus is high priced compared to where commodity prices are at today. But that's not to say that phosphorus can't still make you some money on your farm once you understand how much you need, 
how much you already have in your soil, how much you're going to have to apply based on your application methods, your soil pH, those types of things. So we really want you to understand this. You got to get smarter on the farm when times get tougher and this is an incredibly important step is knowing how much phosphorus you actually need for your crop. Keep in mind the form of phosphorus you use will change the overall availability. For example, there are some very available liquid phosphorus forms that are low salt. We use some of those in furrow on our farm. That's a pretty good way to go if you want maximum efficiency as opposed to some of the dry forms. They're not going to be as readily available. It's going to take more time for them to break down. They have more chance for tie up, that kind of thing. So not only keep in mind where you place the phosphorus, but it's also the form of phosphorus that you do use when you're looking at overall, how many pounds do I actually need to produce the crop I'm looking for? Well, and we're talking about how much it takes to produce the crop, not to also produce a whole bunch of weeds out in your field. If you've got weeds out there, they're going to take up your fertility too. We'll show you how to stop one of those weeds coming up later in the show.